Receiving a message by radio can be more difficult than it might seem. It is a critical task that any radio operator must master if working on behalf of another organization or person. Today we are going to look at how to get a complete message even if you missed part of it the first time without having to resend the whole thing. Stick around. Black, 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 black. We can be copying a message just fine and then the signal fades away or another signal fades in on top of it or there's some other brief interference. You could sneeze. Anything can happen that would cause you to stop copying the message just for a bit. In any case, something has gone wrong. Just keep going. Get as much as you can. You want to have the message as complete as you can possibly get it. The result is that you will have a partial message. The more of it that you can get, the better. And we're going to show how this works. First, there's going to be the full manual like the NTS or the RRI traffic nets. And then there's also digital where we operate as we do in Black Swan and the Ohio Auxiliary Communications Net. For the full manual uh, procedure that we use on voice nets, we're going to show two quick clips from episode 10 on this channel. In the first clip, I heard the station, but I missed a little bit. Notice that I didn't just stop copying when I lost a word. I kept going. Also, the message format is specific. It's an amateur radiogram. That means that I can refer to specific parts, and the sending station knows exactly what I'm talking about. In this case, I missed the part that was the place of origin. Uh, say again, place of origin, over. Place of origin, Cincinnati, Ohio. Roger, 801. Thank you, KD8TTE. Thank you, Matt. KHKRA, back to net. The station needs to transmit only the thing that I missed. It took only a few seconds instead of the three minutes that it would take to send the whole thing over again. Sometimes, however, it just doesn't work that well. That's what happens when we have fading, as we talked about in the last episode. Let's look at a case where I start copying and everything is okay, but then that station signal starts to fade out. I missed a lot of the message, but the structure would help me to keep track of what I missed. And in this case, I basically have a whole preamble, but the text is such a mess that we can't really make sense of it. And I have so many gaps that I'm not sure even how many groups there are. So in that case, we do have a bigger fill that needs to be performed, but still it's faster than getting the entire message over again. We'll copy along to relay if needed. Uh, Medical plus 
facilities in Wyandotte County. Figure X-ray. Wyandotte Memorial Hospital and Harry Charlie Alpha Romeo Echo Yankee Medical Center. Break. Signature Ron Romeo Oscar November K E A P X Wyandotte County Echo Charlie and. Roger, three, thank you, KD8TTE. You're welcome, uh, KCACB, we've got your message, KCAWA, Don. So all this is fine when you are working on a voice net and you're able just to talk your way through the problem. But what happens if we're working with a digital signal, if we're in a circuit that is digital only? How do we know if what we have is right? Uh, one of the features that we get with digital transmissions is that the computer can do a lot of things for us easily. It can do a whole lot better than counting only groups. It can actually compute a checksum. The checksum is computed with an algorithm, a mathematical process implemented in software. We can read data in, and for each input, we have exactly one output of a fixed size. Each input has exactly one corresponding checksum. So any change, like the change of capitalization of a letter, will result in a different checksum. Likewise, if we have a figure zero instead of a capital letter O, it's going to be a different checksum. So in this case, we have a transmission of a message. We have a transmission of a checksum that follows it immediately. The receiving station, by virtue of the format, is able to recognize what part is the text and what part is the checksum. The receiving station will then compute the checksum of the text part and compare the computed checksum against the checksum that was received from the sending station. If they match up, the receiving station has a good assurance that they've got a correct message. On the other hand, if the transmission is somehow garbled and that O in hello turns into a zero, when the station that received the message performs the checksum, it's going to be different. And then when the station that had received the message compares the computed checksum to the received checksum, it's obviously not correct. So of course the checksum is useful. It's even better than a group count. But what do you do if the checksum is bad? Well, you have to retransmit. And in that case, it's not going to help you a whole lot if you have to resend the whole thing. We're talking about fills here after all. So what can we do? If you want to break the message up, you can. You can put it into pieces like building blocks, and then you could put a checksum on every block. In that case, instead of a simple yes or no, I received the message or not, the receiving station can acknowledge receipt of the whole message or indicate which blocks are not good. The sender needs to resend only the bad blocks. In our example here, we have the message hello there broken into two blocks. If we had to resend the whole thing, we would send four blocks plus checksums. If we send only the bad first block, we send only three blocks plus checksums. The resending of a bad block is a fill just like we had with voice procedure. Both cases, the receiver puts the blocks together and builds the complete message. So how do we actually fill with digital? Well, there's two ways that this is performed. One is with ARQ, the automatic repeat request. That's more automatic. It's where each block is checked by the receiver as it comes in and is either acknowledged or the request is made for a repeat right then. FL message can do that, and the modes that are used by WinLink like RDOP, Pactor, and VARA all do that. But it works only point to point from one station to another. It can help if one station had some interference or the signal comes back right away. 
However, if there is a relay necessary, the sending station must send the entire message to the relay station, and the relay station will need to send the entire message to the receiving station. So that means the entire message gets sent twice. There is another option that's closer to what we have in the manual nets like we have on voice and with CW. We can use FL amp like we do on the black swan net. We manually hit the button to send the message. The software will receive the signal and then put the blocks together and it will check to see if the checksum for each block is good. The user will then hit the button to report, so the software will then transmit the list of bad blocks or the blocks that need to be retransmitted. The sender can then choose which blocks to resend. The software will then read them again on the receiving end. It will compute the checksums again, and if the bad blocks are now replaced with good blocks, the checksums do work out, then the software can put those blocks in place and assemble the message until the whole thing has been received. Another nice thing about this is that any station that has the block can transmit it, can perform that function of relay. So if we're sending a message from a sender to a receiver and the receiver is missing a few blocks, it doesn't follow that the sender is the only station that is able to make that fill. If there's a relay station that was just listening passively and has those missing blocks, that relay station is able to transmit just those missing blocks. We showed how this works on episode 54 that talked about the Black Swan Net. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because we're going to have some future videos that will go into some more detail and demonstrate how to do this. We'll do one for FL Amp to show how you can use that tool for message handling and performing these kinds of relay and fill functions as described. We'll also do one on ARQ. We'll show how that's used in messaging and how it works with RDOP and related kinds of modes. And we'll also show how you can do it with FL Message. If you like this video, hit thumbs up. Be sure to share it so that some others who would benefit from this will be able to see it and hopefully build up their skills as well. Subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any of our new content. We'll see you soon. Until then, this is Radio KDA TTE.